Hello, Postables. You're listening to Deliver Me a Podcast, hosted by Casey, Jess, and me, Cammie. Special thanks to James Jandrish for letting us use his amazing music. Now, sit back, relax, grab a Yoo-Hoo and a stamp collection, and here we go. Well, we are going to transport ourselves to the DLO. It's to the world time. of Still <laughs> Delivered. Woo! Okay. Yeah. So one question we have for you is, um, how did you get the role of Ramon? So I know a lot, some people have been connected with Martha in some sort of way. Um, Was this an audition? Did you know Martha prior? Um, Can you tell us a little bit more about that process? Um, I do remember I had auditioned for one of the, like Norman or Oliver. Mm. Um, at the oh, very beginning, really? yeah, I do remember when when they were like, oh. you know, because casting process is like you, you know, depending what markets they're looking at, you know, what regions for actors, mm-hmm. um, casting directors will look at these characters for and the production, and then they'll consider who they might like to see for that, and they'll contact representative, and then the representative will say, what do you think about this, and then the actor, right. will be like, yeah, let's get pick a kick at it, so. Um, it seemed like a dope project. So, I mean, that's our life as actors though. Like I've had so like, yes, I have a lot on IMDb. So imagine like multiply that by the number of auditions. Yeah. You know? Right. So yes. there's, there's, there's been a lot over 25 years. Um, and you, you just, you can't be precious about it. I mean, you gotta be precious when you're working on them, but when it's uh-huh. done, you just gotta throw it away. So yeah, you right. just, you, it, it's gone. Uh, unless of course you, you are working that role and then you become the character and the character you throughout right. however long as that goes and then you can't throw it away it's kind of like you've left part of yourself there mm. but in any case Amen. I sort of that was my first introduction to it and I remember Martha was there and, and I remember I remember just the feeling of wow what a cool what a gracious woman like, it was a cool session sometimes they're not cool sessions when you go in for an audition mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so that was great and then a while later um you know you know my people were like hey what do you think about this character? And um, and uh, and it was Ramon. I was like, oh, I'm I'm not sure. And I think I was busy. I can't remember what I was doing. But Kevin um, is a friend. We worked on a Canadian series called Robson Arms uh, many years ago. I first met him on that. I did about three, two, three seasons of that. And and he um, and he had directed at least one episode of that. And he was rad. Like he is rad. And so I remember him. And so he was kind of in this. And then I got a, either an email from him or from Martha saying, hey, do you want to, you know, like, like um, I can't remember what it was, but I remember that, that I heard from them, like, just with an extra incentive that just take a peek at this, you know. Um, <laughs> and, and that, that's a kind of like, I'm that kind of person, like, if, if somebody sends you a handwritten letter or card, or it, it, it's more than the e-card, you know? Yeah. Sometimes you can only send an e-card, but there's like a different thing. And, and that's just like exactly how she is, you know? She right. makes things happen. She cares and she knows, she has vision. And so that's what it's gonna be, you know? And if she, I now I, I don't wanna get too cloudy on it, but I remember there was a personal um, encouragement, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and, I, and uh, not because I wouldn't want to do it or something, but I, a personal connection, I should say, uh, like uh, right. um, sort of. So that made me more excited um, for for the uh, for the opportunity. And um, and I'm, and um, yeah. And then the next thing was just like reading him and seeing him, and then how can I create this, or how is this going to be where? where he can be fun and flamboyant and, uh, and maybe a little bigger than life, but somehow where it's going to fit in the world of, of uh, just the world that SSD had already created. Mm-hmm. Um, we know Ramon. Yeah. So, <laughs> and, and, and also just to be like, he's sort of like not placeable and um, he's inoffensively offensive, you know? Right. Yes. <laughs> Like it pops up everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And you just can't figure him out. You don't know what he is or who he is or why he is. And so you can't get mad at him, really. <laughs> it's just like, and, and so um, it, it, and it's like, I just like, 
I'm a subject to her, you know, she's, I'm the marionette for Martha. And so right. I've just been on that little ship on her waves and her waters and, um, and she didn't let me down, you know, and um, it's just been just a treat to, to, to be Ramon. And it's always exciting for me when I see a script to be like, oh man, what's he going to be up to now? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, uh, really? Okay, Martha. Yep, yep. Okay. And then I'm like, oh, I can't believe you said that. Oh, I can't I believe I bled you said her that. glasses? What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, I still uh, think Ramon should have been blamed for that, not Norman. <laughs> he pushed the button. The lid was not on. You know? <laughs> well, that's also um, Ramon's thing is to sort of uh, um, exacerbate Norman, right? Like, right. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all teasing. You know, he loves, he loves Norman. And Norman, of course, um, he gets what he deserves, which is the girl. And he gets the good girl. You know, so. yeah. And Ramon's happy for him, so. Oh, we're going to talk more about that in a minute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, I hope that answered your question a little bit about coming about to him. I just yeah. remember oh, yeah. just a personal, it meant, it just, I remember that I, I, I didn't know Martha, but I had, a, I remember when I first met her that she made an impression and I really liked her and mm -hmm. I did know Kevin. So when I kind of got a personal note from them that they were doing this thing, um, then I, I really, um, that gave me more incentive to, to hopefully be part of it. And so I'm glad it worked out that I am. Oh yeah, we are too. We can't imagine SSD without -uh. you and Ramon. Can't, can't have it without Ramon. No. <laughs> <laughs> so Ramon is a man of many, many talents. And we have discovered by listening to your podcast with Cup of Jen and just reading your posts and seeing things in the past that you've been involved with that you are too. <laughs> you are a man of many talents. So yes. was the, was the character matching? Was that happenstance or did Martha kind of glean that from you to write into Ramon? I, I can't, I don't, I can't imagine how much she might've really known. I don't, I don't know. I think it was happenstance and circumstance and causalidad and coincidence. And um, I don't, I'm not sure. Oh, I'm, interesting. I, 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 I don't, I think, I think um, it was like, the idea was there. I mean, I didn't, she, Ramon existed in her mind and in her heart on, on her paper before any person had been attached to it. So she had an idea of who he was and what he was for. Um, and then just like all my lovely castmates, when they come and they approach something, they, they bring their own take on it. And then that, that thing that she's created becomes something new and a little different with the interpretation by that, that artist, that performing artist. And then from that, because she is real and a, a genius, then her, moving forward, her writing and her thoughts and the possibilities and her ideas don't continue just on, from what the original template that she created. Mm -hmm. It now continues from what this more fully realized version or actually moving around version of her, her iconic figure she's created. So mm -hmm. moving forward, she will write adjusting to that. So, yeah. so but, you know, Ramon certainly was a thing that existed from her mind, her imagination. I, I, did Ramon and then and then she continued to write him in these ways and I don't know if it was because like there's no way that he could pull this off boom you know no way we can get away with this let's make Ramon this and you know no way that you know we can say this and and then so I think each time it was like take it a step further or do it just down a different path and so I can't take any credit for me being like that much of a jack of all trades that inspired her maybe she does know that I'm into a bunch of stuff different stuff or maybe she was just having fun with the character uh, like I was and he just went like this I'm not sure we'll have to ask her that's a good question yeah so what inspired um the accent for Ramon <laughs> or who did or who you... <laughs> or was it just something that you know you were playing around with because he has to be you know different and flamboyant and just like you know larger than life well, yeah, we'll be there. <laughs> yes, and that that was like I didn't invent that. That was written like that. Um, oh, she wrote, she, wrote, she wrote that joke, Ovilia, and, um, <laughs> and so you so you can see he he existed like that, like this oh, sort of yes. goofy guy, and his name was Ramon, 
Um, and so, you know, he's probably, or I don't want to say he's not, but he might not be like German, you know, if his name is Ramon. So <laughs> probably kind of not. A, right. I mean, there's going to be some German Ramones that are going to be sending me some mail, handwritten, please. <laughs> Handwritten hate notes um, <laughs> that are going to be like, what are you talking about? I am Ramon. <laughs> you know, you know. I'm like, okay, man, I'm just, I was generalizing a bit. I didn't, I didn't mean but, but, but so just, so I think my thoughts, if, if there was going to be an accent, it might be more on the Spanish or, or Latin mm -hmm. side. Right. So, so that kind of informed that choice, I think. Um, and he was a dance instructor, you know, and, you know, um, and, and was sort of flamboyant and had this sort of like, oddness because um you know <clears throat> you see um you know eric and Kristen's kind of reaction to him when he's first there and it's like what, what's going on Is everything this correct <laughs> yeah, exactly so so if you're if you're gonna have an accent and do something those yeah. kind of things came from like i mean she gave me the template and those are the sounds that kind of came out i suppose um okay but then but then as we continued um it became kind of fun to make the accent un a little unplaceable. And mm -hmm. then his interests also be sort of really like everywhere, not everywhere, not just like um, a specific type of Latino culture, you know, food yeah. and sound or a specific Hispanic vibe, you know, it, it, it just kind of started to come from all over, like these different kind of things that his past and stuff. And then it's like, who is he really where is he from really you know and what what and so then that just he just continues to grow as this as it's the myth the man the legend called Ramon <laughs> we should make that a t-shirt that yes the myth the man the legend Ramon, Ramon. Rodriguez yes, yes. <laughs> Yes. I know. Putting it on my list of things to do. Yes. Put it down right now. <laughs> I vouch for that. That's a good one. I'll even send some photos in of me eating a soup or something. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to Photoshop the beard back in. <laughs> Leave it to Ramon to take lemons and make soup. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What a joy. <laughs> do we know where he's supposed to be from because um he speaks all these languages and he says romania is you know my mother tongue and then he had the matador job and you know he like you said i mean he i mean if we want to keep and he was mythical, a general <laughs> yes a general yeah. yes and a pilot yes. yes so yeah do we know where he's from <laughs> Or we can keep that, you know, the mythical. Oh, yes, we can mythical. keep, keep it within that. There that are realm. some things I am not liberty to reveal. Because I don't know. Uh, <laughs> no. no, what I know, I cannot let you know. Because you do know there is a curtain. We must maintain this curtain of That's mystery. Right. When mm. the show is closed, we step behind the curtain. None shall pass. So, so pay no yeah. attention to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> yeah, just keep, just keep, keep, you know, ruminating over the man you saw in front of the curtain on the stage. Ah, because <laughs> you still don't know everything that you saw. So, so there's enough there to ponder. If we let you behind the curtain, you'll see all the clockwork and the gears and the, you know, the oil mm -hmm. dripping and, um, you know those kinds of things so we you know we got to put on the pretty show for you and keep the little secrets because they got to be revealed you know we when we do more ssd more little things will be touched base on not just about ramon but that's just, yeah that's an interesting yeah. thought if it's if it gets written into the next movie where ramon is from that would be fun to Maybe maybe Ramon won't be in the next movie. Maybe that's the big oh, secret no, about it. No. Or, oh, or maybe he will. We, it, you know, we we don't know. It all depends. What's it all depends depends what the story is that needs to be told at the time. All right, Casey, we need to we need to start a new hashtag. Bring back Zach. <laughs> there you go. Bring back Zach. <laughs> Bring back Zach. Oh, this is D. Eleven, twelve, uh, thirteen, thirteen. I think so. Just the next movie. We'll the start next that hashtag movie. campaign. Even we, even we here on the podcast have lost count. Yeah. <laughs> We've done some. There's, there's been some good ones. That's oh, awesome. man. So uh, during one of the marathons, I actually took a poll because I was seeing Ramon's 
many different hairstyles. He kind of goes through a plethora of them. And so I took a poll of postables to see which did the postables prefer, the short hair or the long hair? And the majority vote came out short, but what do you like better? It's a good, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't have um, to be you personally. It can be on the character. On the character, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think because more often than not, at least at the first appearance of Ramon, he had like fairly long hair swept mm -hmm. back. He does, yes. Yeah, so, and then at other times you would still, you, there was a bit of light there and it was kind of brushed back. So, but then he looks handsome when he's doing like the weather stuff and his hair is a little shorter. I think it's shorter in those ones. Mm -hmm. It is. Um, so, You're remembering uh, but, correctly. No punching needed. Good. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, but, but I think because he did have long hair, then that's like, that's just like fond memories because mm -hmm. that was like, wow. Well, thanks for thinking of me for this and thanks for um, welcoming me into this beautiful family or giving me the chance to, you know, try to be part of the family and I'm so happy to be here. And so that's just like that initial inception. Mm -hmm. How he looked then was sort of like, I guess should be like what my favorite is. But then as he's continued to grow and change as a character, so his style and his clothes and his history, we learn more. So. That's all him too. So I don't know. I'm going to leave it at, I like it longer because, because that's how we first got to know him. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm happy, you know, if Martha writes him in again and he's got a mohawk, then hey. <laughs> hey, work it. <laughs> if he's wearing a leather jacket on a motorcycle with a mohawk and a parrot on his shoulder. Oh, I mean, let's, let's do it. Go girl. That's cool. I see what you did there. And nothing surprises for a moment. Yes. <laughs> nothing is past. That's very That's true. true. Nothing <laughs> surprises him. So the, so the hairstyles wouldn't bleed over from other roles or you were just about to do another role? It was so, more character motivated or was it other role motivated? No, no, that's a great question because if we don't know when or, you know, when the, when the, the timeline is for the movies, and right. sometimes we might get an idea of what they're going to be, but we don't know. I mean, certainly like um, my leads know they're going to be in them, but, but the rest sure. of all my, my supporting family who are mm -hmm. gems, um, mm -hmm. we don't always know which one or what, where our arc might figure if and when. So, right. but life still goes on. So, right. um, you know, last few years I've been working on a few projects and I remember my hair was long. I played a, a character in, Ch in the last Chucky movie, not the, the super recent one, but the one uh, that the creator Don Mancini did. And, and he had a little longer hair. And then I did a, a series for a couple of years on BBC America called um, Dirk Gently. Um, Dirk yes. Gently's Holistic mm -hmm. Detective Agency. And I, I played this sort of like vampire -y guy and he had really oh. hair. And then I played this, like a ghost uh, series that takes place in Alaska called, called uh, Ghost Wars. And um, that was on sci-fi. And my character was like a kind of like a, an Alaskan sort of like small town truck driving kind of, you know, uh, dude. And so he had longer hair too. So I was keeping my hair long for, for I guess, like over Several. that period. Yeah. yeah. And then there was a few other things in and there. So, and then, and then I moved to something where he had to be a lot shorter. And then between that, it's like, when it's like, Zach, we're coming to do, and Ramon, and then it's like, I try to then be Ramon as much as I can at that time, but, mm -hmm. but, but some things that just might be informed by some of the other stories I've been telling around that yeah. and that can affect my hair. I usually don't do stuff where I'm gaining or losing tons of weight, et cetera, or, but like right now you see me with my face shaped and that's from work. Right. right. Um, normally like I just kind of usually hang out with a bit of a goatee. Um, but, 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 this character need to be clean shaven. So it's things like that. And so if Ramon came back and we're shooting right now, he wouldn't have a beer, you know? And you'd be like, <laughs> what? Because, because, because I, I, my mom says I'm a man, you know? My dad <laughs> says like, I'm a man, but, um, but it takes me like about a year to grow a goat. <laughs> so I, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have the full man uh, capabilities to grow that fast. So I'm working on it. But, uh. Well, for what it's worth, I think you look very handsome clean shaven. 
Thank so, you. You're Thank welcome. You. Coming from a beautiful woman, that's a very nice compliment. Thank you very much. <laughs> very sweet. <laughs> that's so sweet. Thank you. So the next question might be a little deep, but we would love to know, what would you say is the biggest way your relationship has grown with your castmates uh, since you began? Because you're one of the very, you're one of the very first supporting um, actors that have been through the series and like the episodic series and then yeah. the movies, you know, we see Ramon come in and out and over the course of time, we get to know him um, a lot more um, and he really starts to, um, I don't know, dwell in our hearts. Like we were just like, oh, Ramon's back. He's a fan favorite. Yes, Everybody really loves is. Ramon. <laughs> Yeah. Um, wow. I think probably because um, I think because when I have a connection with anybody, which I end up ha ends up happening if they are, you know, an open soul, you know, um, once you start getting going through trenches with people, then, you know, you become allies in a, in a specific way. And, um, and you need to support we all need to support um, each other and everyone we should treat as our neighbors, you know, mm, absolutely. Um, and our neighbors we should treat as ourselves. Right. So the people we don't know want, we want to treat like, like we do know them, you know, and then we want to know them like we know ourselves and love them the same mm -hmm. way. So when you're open and working on something and going through stuff with people, then you can really get some, some close bonds. Um, <clears throat> so with my castmates, um, bonding i think you know working on on such a kind of a show that touches face on a lot of things raises a lot of questions and opens and touches a lot of hearts you know i think there's a lot of moving pieces you know and then you're dealing with multi-million dollar productions with people that live all over the place and you know um and it's a business you know and there's got to be distribution and there's a network and there's you know things going on there's a lot of moving parts to create these these lovely thing so it's hard work you know everyone works hard you know to, like all our production and everybody from from network down is like working hard so um it's not easy for anybody to to make to make great product um so i think just working with people um on challenging things in challenging situations you can get really close to become like the, your teammates on a, on a tough team or they become yeah. like your your um your trench mates in, 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 like in, you're in the military or something. And then within that, um, you bond some friendships closer than others or just all of them really close, but who has time to become best friends with every single person. But, sure. but then when you have your own personal life ups and downs or mm -hmm. things that, that happen, then if other people are, are present for those and can be supportive or affected by those, then that, changes your relationship with them a little bit too. Mm -hmm. And, 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 uh, you know, <clears throat> I just, um, I've had a really, uh, a, such a beautiful life. Um, there's been, you know, significant tragedy. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, I try to take beauty from that and, and be as positive as I can from those mm -hmm. moments. And there'd been a couple of them that were connected to sort of, during the shooting and so like um you know just family stuff and loss and things mm -hmm. and um and uh so f having like a, i remember there was some pivotal moments where without that real intimate bond of some of my signed sealed and delivered family you know being there for me when they didn't have to be mm -hmm. um it sort of takes your relationship to a different level Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. And those, those are the kind of friends that you don't, they don't need to do anything or they don't need to be away. And also yeah. you sharing that with them might not come out if there wasn't really a genuine thing there. But um, yeah, I think that moments like that have made me closer to the cast um, on, on those really profound ways. Then on a, on a performance or a professional way, they're so collaborative and so great. And um, I, I, like, they're just so good. Um, so we have so much fun. Mm -hmm. and, and just to watch, like when I watch like 
Eric and Kristen just do these scenes where it's just like the dialogue they do day to day. It's like, what kind of brain do you have? <laughs> and then yeah. if you guys, if you guys could see each take, it's like, they're just changing things and do, they're not like these talking heads. They're really living these things each time. And they're like set in word for word. And then, you know, with Crystal and Jeff, you know, I've known them. They're my, my, my homies from, from my acting community. And mm -hmm. me and Crystal, I know like we worked in bars together years ago. Like we've known oh, each other wow. for years. Like I've DJed and she worked in bars and we're acting and coming in. We're still acting, but we still love the nightlife or the hospitality. So right. you know, we're not doing that right now. Um, but I mean, but I've known her, you know, as a homie for a long time and we've acted <laughs> on other stuff. And Jeff is no joke, not just in my Vancouver scene, but I swear globally, one of the funniest, like one of the funniest people anybody could ever, he, that's my toughest challenge. One of my toughest acting experiences ever is keeping a straight face in scenes with him. Oh, like I've I done bet. stuff, I've done stuff where I've had to suffer or play these characters that are going through horrible things or I've stopped freezing or I'm doing stunts. One of the most challenging things is to not lose it and to be straight when I'm with, cause he's, he is so funny like um i i i, I can't I, I you guys have interviewed him i don't know mm -hmm. what that like he's oh, funny he really. was oh, so he's, funny so yeah, funny yeah. Yeah. So, we were dying we were all dying was, uh, he's very quick <laughs> yeah he's very quick <laughs> so i think just working with great people and being able to like be dope mm -hmm. like that with them is being made that get tighter but then beyond that just don't like holy smokes you're my real friends like and i'm and there's a rope that I needed right now. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll tell you, that starts with Martha. She, she cares. Yeah. She mm -hmm. cares, man. She is about as real as they get. And that's marvelous. Yeah, Amazing. she was really there for me. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I've lost like a couple of people, family and, uh, and my best friend within pretty close time frame mm -hmm. um, and was so working sorry. lots. Yeah. Um, it was tough. I'd, I'd lost my wife years before and, you know, these people were at that funeral and um, um, it, it just kind of like it, things kind of snowball and kind of tie in together a little bit. And, sure. and you just, it's just sometimes it's hard to breathe, you know, and, um, yeah. and she, uh, yeah, she's, she's the real deal. Yeah. She is a real spirit. That one. That's so marvelous. That is wonderful to hear i mean we hear so much about martha and how um personal and caring she is and it comes out in her script and you know obviously everybody we've talked to it's come out and you know <clears throat> personally so that's that's always wonderful for all of us to hear yeah yeah she's awesome she's yeah, yeah i love her to death yeah mm -hmm. that's how i always like to hear from her and reach out and we're both nerdy like listen I love everyone on earth. I love every human being on earth. I love, I love all of God's creatures, but we're both nerdy Christians too. I'm, <laughs> a, I'm, I'm a Catholic, you know, and Martha's like, so sometimes we like to nerd out and talk about God and, mm -hmm. and our faith and things like that. And it's, you know, so, so that's like a fun, I don't know, for me, that's important. You know, I, yeah, I'm, of course. I can ha have that dialogue with somebody that you don't always find people that are like, are just sort of like resonating on certain levles, especially in, in, Mm -hmm. uh, well, in, in any walk of life, but in the business too. Mm -hmm. So that's a one of the for me personally. I can't speak for anybody else, but for me, I love that. I mean, it, it, that's like really cool about working on this show. Okay. <sighs> that's such a warm glow right now. <laughs> oh, good. I was going to ask because you mentioned it's hard to keep a straight face with a uh, with Jeff. How hard was it for y'all? to keep straight faces during the, the dip into oh the altar. My God. <laughs> How did you not drop him because you were laughing so hard? And I think you like grab him too. You're like, come Whoa. here. And then you're doing the, you know, the waltz or something. Yeah. And yeah, I just, I, um, she, you know, when I say like Martha's like so sweet, so kind, she's still, she, she's the boss though. Like yes. she runs, yeah. she runs things and she knows yes. what she wants and she knows how to get it. And she knows how things should be like, yes. she's strong with her vision. So I remember on that time, that's like, 
that's a time when when she had to speak like uh, not coddling, you know, um, but like because like a I think, stern mom. Yeah, because I, I don't because I, I I don't think I was getting it, you know. So you know, she had to be a little firm with her, like because and yeah, it's because I yeah, I just couldn't I couldn't do my thing because he's just too he's just too much. It's just too gust too much gustison for me in one in one moment. I was just giggling and I might have peed my I I don't know like. <laughs> probably shaking I don't know it's just it's too much like humor and trying to contain it it was like um yeah I, uh so I think Martha had to had to like and so I you know we only got those takes because I because I was getting scared because, <laughs> <laughs> because otherwise I would have been just jelly like he was making me laugh so much oh my gosh I wonder if he would have said the same thing. I wonder if he would have said that you were making him laugh. I think he, I think that was funny for him too. Yeah, I think it was funny for him too. Yeah, it's a gift. So you know, it's it's a gift. Yeah, it's it's a gift now of you yeah. dipping him. So. Oh great! Yes. How do we? How how do we? I'm like I. Not old, but I'm really I'm square in some things. And how do I'm we, how still do you, square in gifts as well, yeah, so you are not alone. <laughs> I never know. Like some of my friends, right away, will text me back with this little, like a gif or whatever. I'm like, oh, where do you find that so fast? Like I'm just trying to like write okay with like the with like the, with the punctuation happy face, you know, <laughs> not even a thumbs up. I'm still trying to figure that. I'm still trying to get back. And they've got this moving thing of some character that <laughs> says on the thing exactly what we're talking about. I'm like, how, do you just have those? Like, <laughs> what, how do you, like, what is this, where does this gift world exist? Yeah. I don't know. And if there's a Ramon and all of our, uh, Ramon and Norman one, then, then send it to me. Yes. So I could plug in for the, the, um, the gifts for SSD. Uh, Shandell from Alameda Downing, she has a whole ton of them. And I think she has that one on her blog. Oh, great. So we can okay. send that over to you, that, okay. that link, well, and it has like a bunch yeah. of them. And I like, to, I like to check in on you guys on Twitter because uh, yeah. it always makes me happy. And so I, I, <laughs> I, know, I know she pops up in there, so maybe I'll, yes. I'll, I'll, I'll gift hunt. Yes, go Ooh, gift hunting. Yes, go yes. gift hunting. <laughs> and then the uh, just gifting, gifting your friends, gifting, is that a word? Um, there's an app. We're going to make it. We're yeah. going to make it a word. <laughs> I think you get an app and then it just kind of connects to your text. Yes. Okay, cool. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I have a question about from Paris with love. Uh, Ramon was telling Rita about his cliff diving and she was, uh, she, she was being a little flirty <laughs> and he, he was being totally flirty. <laughs> so what is, and Ramon all of a sudden got very deep and he said, and he talked about facing your fears and how when you face them, they no longer have power over you. What is something that you've done that has scared you and then it's come out to be a really good thing? What can I say on the podcast? Huh? <laughs> um, Well, you know, I think surrendering absolutely to God can be scary because you want to, you don't know that you're going to be fully accepted or fully loved. I think um, mm. to, to surrender completely um, and know that um, it's unconditional, you know, yeah. um, that can be frightening for a lot of people. And I think that's a, a stumbling block or, or something that, that, stops them from from investigating or embracing that further um so just in a just in that sense i'd have to say that can be challenged when you've lived a storied life and um we're all caught up in ourselves we all have these self-doubts and we all have a lot of pain you know and a lot of um you know we don't like ourselves a lot sometimes you know many of us you know and we don't like things about us so we're not we're not comfortable with how we feel or how we think or, or who we are sometimes. And so true. we don't want to sit, talk about that or share that. Um, but we don't, we're, we're scared. We're not going to be accepted. And that's many times we're not because mm -hmm. if it's by other people who are also living in a bit of fear or closure, then they're not going to be as quick to accept 
something else that is not the way things they know or want to be. So mm -hmm. we walk around with this sort of protective thing. So I think to open yourself to something that um, you're really trying to know more about, I think that can be scary for a lot of people. So um, just be staying open to, to the Lord, I think is, is something that um, the value, uh, and it's not, it's not hard once you figure it out, once you just, it's not hard. It just is just, it just is, um, it's normal. It's just natural. It's just like life. It's just being alive. That's what it is, you know? So, but I think that's super empowering. Um, and it can be a struggle for some people. Yeah. Um, uh, apart from that, I, <clears throat> I've faced a lot of really intense challenges. Mm -hmm. Um, And I have my fears. I have some some fears or some lots of hesitancy, you know. And I think a lot of my lifestyle and my work ethic and my mm, how I have my days and what I do is a lot of that sort of if I analyze myself is based along that keeping myself busy, keeping myself, you know, I'm always like doing things because um, some things might be more of a challenge for me, you know, to build some certain relationships or be a certain way or have to live in certain moments or things. Mm -hmm. And that's because there's pain or trauma or fear of those things. But I think if we know that, because we all have, we all have that, we've all been hurt. Um, by ignoring or running away or turning our, our turning ourselves off to those things, mm -hmm. we're not healing anything or changing anything. So, we're only stopping part of us growing that's around that. So um, I think we need to touch those things, those painful things and those scary things. Mm -hmm. And and it will be difficult, but but uh, I think positivity, beauty and health and rejuvenation comes out of checking into that. So these are sort of generalized things I'm saying, but just as a word of encouragement, that's like me being, we're all the same, we're all, we're all, we're all God's creatures and we all hurt. We all sin. Um, mm -hmm. We all love and we all need love and we all are loved, but we all need love from everywhere and we all need to be giving love and, mm. and it's fear that stops any of that from happening. So yeah. to be really general about it, I think it's love ourselves so we mm -hmm. can love everybody else and let God love you um, because he does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Love God, love others. First two claimants. <laughs> Absolutely. And on a lighter note, have you ever been cliff diving? You? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, some, sometimes I'll just like wander, like I'll go to a public place um, and walk on something really high in my Speedo. Um, to, <laughs> just so that I can be a little more comfortable in, in that part of it. There you uh, go. <laughs> and then I, and then I don't jump off anything. I just walk around. And then usually <laughs> sometimes people will start to yell sometimes, you know, paramedics or police officers will come and say, sir, you can't, can't be doing that. I'm like, I'm not going to jump. It's only like six feet. I know, but you, you really shouldn't be outside at the speedo. And, and, and um, yeah, but, but I, but no, I never clipped that. I, I, uh, okay. So that's something being scared of something. I did uh, bungee jump. Um, oh. And, and um, I'm just going to make up a, an imaginary situation. Imagine if it wasn't a legal bungee jump. Okay. Imagine well. if it was like with some friends who um, kind of scaled a bridge and at night. Oh. Um, and, and so it was not, you're not supposed to do it. It's not sanctioned and, and not with like a real company there. And it's really dark and the river is really far down below and it's a huge river. Oh my. And it's really noisy with trucks going over the bridge and you're on this catwalk under the bridge. And then you've got a totally, jump. totally hypothetical situation. Yeah, huh? just yeah. imagination. And you've never <laughs> bungee jumped before. And, um, and you can't, you've got to jump across this catwalk and spring off the ledge off the other side into the void. And it's only when you cross that void is you see how far up you are in the cold wind with that roiling black water beneath you that moves logs and has sturgeons like hundreds of meters below. Oh my. And, <laughs> And you're kind of going face first. You've never bungee jumped before. And there's other like kind of tough guys around you. So, and everyone's waiting to go. 
and it's like someone's gone and so you can't not go you can't not go boy oh. so imagine if that was a kind of a thing and you can't tell people you're scared you no absolutely that. no no um and then you face that and you did that um then that could be something where you faced a fear and uh-huh. um, in, in that primal instinctual way and did it mm-hmm. um, uh-huh. Hypothetically speaking, of course. Hypothetically. Yeah. 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 Theoretically speaking. <laughs> These things don't happen and shouldn't happen. No. Because A, they're, they're, not, they're unsafe. B, clandestine operations on public roadworks. <laughs> B, and C, um, I say they're unsafe. They're contrary to, to the law of the area. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... So we should not be, you know, messing around, only considering what things those things could be. Hmm. Uh huh. <laughs> all right. Well, leave that to all y'all's imaginations. <laughs> yes, indeed, we shall. <laughs> and that, Moving and that, on. That's, that's one that I could maybe hypothesize on a on a on a podcast. There's other <laughs> ones that I can hypothesize, but I don't want people. Too hard. <laughs> too, too, too <laughs> Moving <laughs> on. <laughs> Speaking of Rita, was Ramon really that into Rita, or was he being a player and being difficult competition for Norman? Oh, who could resist a woman like that? <laughs> Nobody, but he kind of attacks any situation with a woman like that. <laughs> Yeah, it is his nature. Ramon uh-huh. has to be, yeah, he has to, he was put on this earth to acknowledge and appreciate and um, gravitate towards things of exceptional beauty. And what more beautiful form is there than the divine feminine form? <laughs> well, that's one way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll just, tell you, I'll, I'll just tell you what. As Ramon. Yeah. <laughs> it, I'll tell you what, it's gravitating towards that dance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 that was pretty fun. The, the two of you and, oh. and Ramon's Ramon's reaction to the dance at first, and then no one else on the planet would do this except for maybe Norman. He goes along with it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. That was classic. Oh my goodness, I started laughing my head off. You know, I talk, I talk about Jeff being so funny, and, and he is. Uh, you know, full stop. Um, but, but Crystal's pretty, pretty darn funny, you know, and she, <laughs> you know, she's, she's played like, cause she's an extremely beautiful woman. Um, right. so she, she's played like, like the hot girl or the prize right. or the, mm-hmm. the babe lots, but, um, but put her in the, in like the super just deadpan and funny and role. She's just like, she's the fun. Oh, okay. We need the hot girl and we need the funny girl and we need the whatever and the stern girl, you know, or we need this guy and that guy. And we need, you know, when there's like looking at these temp iconic templates and that general, right. Things. Right. She, she, she could be, it should be any one of them. You know what I mean? And so when <laughs> she's got to play the goofy, funny person, it's like, no problem. Yeah. She's pretty brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> she is. Especially with that dance. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. Yeah. She's fearless. Oh, she's fearless, man. She's just, <laughs> She goes all. She goes out there all out. We did a we did a baseball movie. Yes, bench warmers. Yeah, that's bench right. warmers. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's like two 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 years ago maybe mm-hmm. or something. But yeah, she's yes. so fu- she's so funny in that too. <laughs> she's she's the uh, in the same movie the stamp the the stamp dispenser ribbon cutting was it actually cold that day. Because we see the steam rising. I know I'm asking you to go way far back, but we see the steam rising from the cup of coffee. But I couldn't, when we did the recap of that movie, I just said, Ramon, you are such an idiot. (laughs) It's eight (laughs) degrees and you're taking off your scarf and you're taking off your coat. There is no way that it could be eight degrees and a man is standing there in just his suit, especially if he's got Latin blood. (laughs) That's true. But then think of the sacrifice he's doing. Oh, yes. That's That's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. Chivalrous. That's exactly it. Absolutely. Any amount of discomfort. Because but for you, Zach, was it actually cold that day? Because uh, it looked y- like y- it could have yeah. been. Yeah, it was cold. Yeah, it was, it was cold. 
Um, it was cool. It's cool. And it's cold, not just for us. It's cool for all the crew that are standing around that you can't see and everyone like sometimes. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah sometimes you're working in conditions where, um, where I mean, and, you but know, they didn't take off their coats. <laughs> no, no, that's very, that's true. Thank you. Thank you for vouching for us actors. That's part. Yes. Sometimes it's a cushy job and sometimes it's, there's more physically, um, difficult. Challenging. <laughs> Challenging. Yeah. And that was a cool day. That's fine. We were, I was, me and Eric were just talking about that last night because oh really we're, we're just trying to figure out when we're you know who can who can go to link up with the other person right soon mm -hmm. soon and he's like I gotta get up there I miss blah, blah, blah. you better get here now man we're having another heat wave and it's gonna be really nice for the next week and uh and we're looking at a timeline of when he might come up and I'm like I just hope you get here before it's like the Vancouver rain comes or you know but then we talked about that scene and filming he goes yeah even when we were filming in like november and it was cold he goes it's not that bad man it's not that bad there so from someone who doesn't live up here um to say it wasn't that that bad then i guess it, it couldn't have been that cold not that bad. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it looked cold. It looked pretty it looked, chilly. I mean, it looked cold. <laughs> Florida girl here. Anything below oh, 70s yeah. cold. So yeah. oh, you, Florida, <laughs> Texas, you know. <laughs> oh yeah. It would be really, really cold for you guys for yeah. sure. But, but also it's like, I did go to I, school in Idaho, you know, okay. the, the state you were actually pointing to on the map. That's you know? right. <laughs> it gets cold there. Holy smokes. It does get cold there. Yeah. We film sometimes in like Winnipeg or mm -hmm. Calgary or Toronto Ooh, or Montreal yeah. and our Canadian winters get pretty brutal. It's like the, it's yeah. like the Eastern oh. seaboard for you guys. It's like New York, you know, in the winter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, that's no joke. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. It's true. Do you have a either a favorite installment of SSD that you've been in or a favorite um, Ramon specific moment or scene? That you, you can, can say of? both too. <laughs> I, I I don't I don't I um because it's all it's all it's like it's always like Christmas. It's always like when when I get that script or I'm sitting and I'm doing the read through with these people. It's like being around the Christmas tree, mm -hmm. you Aww. know, and so. I don't look back on being, oh, that Christmas was so good. It's like, I think about, I just love Christmas, you know, yeah. I just love Christmas with my family. So it's, it's like, they're always just like, this is the best or this is so <laughs> fun. You know, they're always, it's just, cause they always come like, you don't know, mm -hmm. you don't know. It's like, you don't know. And you don't know if that present, at least, you know, there's Christmas every year, but you don't know if there's SSD every year. <laughs> yeah. So it's like a Christmas time. It's Christmas and a Christmas present. You yeah. Know? So, um, <laughs> But there's being like the stuff that you guys have brought up that all, mm -hmm. they're all like um, real clutch memories, you know, yeah. from, you know, um, times that have been tough because I had to fight not to laugh, but also times that have been rewarding with, with you know, loved ones making fun stuff. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, I don't know. Probably the same stuff for me, for you guys or yeah. for all our postables that was being the funnest of his is probably the same meaning. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're just like the scenes that are written that are so fun. And so to actually be able to play those, it's just as fun for me as it mm -hmm. is for you guys to watch. Is there, a, is there a movie where you think Ramon's role was the most pivotal? Because I have, I have one that I think. Hmm. There's been actions or things that he's done or been the catalyst of things that have been super important. And there's been other times where he's given a piece of gold, like he said something really uh -huh. important. Um, <clears throat> but as someone who loves and, and like really cherishes that, that sacrament of marriage, you know, mm -hmm. that covenant yes. with, with, with two people who love each other and with God, with a man and woman of God, you know, um, when, when he got to, uh, um, <clears throat> marry those two lovebirds that um, <laughs> that I, that I really that for me I love that that was really cool yeah yeah, yeah. I love that that was a cool moment for me so then that's obviously super important and pivotal so but um, but also a loving uh, you know what a what a lovely moment to kind of preside over right yeah yeah all righty. So we're in our last segment. Super fun. You we survived. Yes. Yay. Yay. You guys survived. Oh, my, my, my <laughs> rambling. No, we love it. We love we it. We love it. Uh, we so love it. 
So our last segment is our SSD. We don't really have a good name for it. We just call it Teen Beat because the podcast that this segue that this podcast segued off of uh, does Teen Beat, but we're doing the SSD way. So short, quick answers. Maybe I don't know. We'll see. Maybe fun stories to go along. We'll with see it. what happens. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try to be keep them short so I can make it. But you know me. Or I'm you can make them fun. You know. <laughs> All righty. Um, <laughs> so these this first section is just who is. Most likely to so um for you and your castmates who is most likely to play a prank on set crystal oh interesting. okay have you seen any that she's pulled or attempted to can't tell you oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's been sworn to secrecy <laughs> Uh, and, uh, Kevin, and Kevin, probably Kevin, our director. Is. Oh, okay, okay. Who's who's most likely to break out into song in between takes? Uh, Eric. Okay. okay, that's been unanimous so far. Yeah, yeah, it has. <laughs> um, who is most likely to break out into a little dance between takes? Crystal, <laughs> I think yeah. Crystal. Yeah, yeah. That's that's been a that's been a generally used answer as well. Mm -hmm. uh, most likely to be found at craft services. Oh, that's it. Me, me getting <laughs> getting tea and coffee, and and of course anything that my lovely um, two beautiful castmates, if they needed anything, because I'll always ask. You need anything. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just remembering what Jeff said. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he kind of threw him under the bus. His, his answer was not as kind and chivalrous as yours. <laughs> right, I can imagine. Yeah, but, that's, but that's his job. That's, that's Jeff. <laughs> All right, who is most likely to laugh or cry at an inappropriate time during filming? Kristen. Kristen. Okay. I, for a second, I couldn't hear if you said Crystal or Kristen. Inappropriate or just like being like really like vibing, like, re I mean, just so much like, she, like, um, but nothing inappropriate, but I just mean like, um, yeah. Um, like, like stuff welling up from mm. work. That's like being in the zone you yeah, know what right. I mean? and just being, yeah. 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 Uh, most likely to contribute the most money to the swear jar. <laughs> yes, we know about the swear jar. <laughs> We've heard stories. Uh, We've heard stories. lots of stories. <laughs> oh, to, most likely to contribute or most likely to who should be contributing? Oh! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Um, <laughs> there was a lot of name they, dropping on Twitter amongst, you know. Uh, I, I don't know. Would it be, would it be me, me, me or Gregory Harrison? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> No That's one has new. said no. Greg or you, so <laughs> okay. that would be new. Yeah. Everybody well, else is pointing fingers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, maybe Kristen. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, on Twitter, somebody asked, one of the post bulls asked this. It was during one of the uh, Hallmark marathons that they were doing sign still delivered, and somebody asked if it was a functioning swear jar, and then somebody asked who contributed the most, and Eric name dropped Kristen, and then Kristen and then she, named dog Crystal, and then, and then Crystal, Crystal said it would be herself, and then Jeff said yeah. it would be himself, and then he pointed yeah. fingers at Kristen or Crystal. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I said me or I said me or Gregory because if we're talking about fights than boxing, then we we, we might get a little potty mouth because we're big boxing fans. Oh, oh yeah. Um, but but you know, <laughs> but uh, Crystal Crystal can get deep too. She can she's uh she can get deep. <laughs> um, with, the, with the with the language, so but I, but I think we all can. I mean, it's you know, we we all could, but we don't and we shouldn't because on that set we do not speak that way. There you go. So it's an I empty love that jar. rule. I love that. Oh, empty jar. Uh huh. An uh -huh. Empty uh -huh. jar. Uh huh. <laughs> all right. The next question is: Who is the best dancer?
Crystal or Jeff? Oh, okay. Wow. They both said, well, uh, Jeff, Jeff said you. Yes, he said you are a, a great flamingo dancer. That's and then right. quickly that's corrected. just he's making fun flamingo. of my long skinny, skinny legs <laughs> no that's he what, was trying to what. say the right word I, I know, <laughs> he, I know, he really I know. was I know. no but that makes it funnier <laughs> he was yeah, trying yeah. to say the right word i know i know i know <laughs> it is funny to say flamingo though it's funny it is fun <laughs> who who has the best memory oh who has the best memory martha Oh, Ooh. yes. Okay. That yes, makes a lot of, of sense. Yes, of it course. does. Um, who is, or who do you think is the best baker or cook? Kristen, probably. Okay. okay. I was wondering if it was going to be you with all the recipes you were naming off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can make toast or popcorn. <laughs> There you go. They'll probably both be burnt. <laughs> oh. I can open a bottle of wine, though. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Duly noted. <laughs> <laughs> best, okay. person for best person for popping open a bottle of wine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this one, this one gets tricky. If you were stuck on an island with your castmates, what would each of you be doing until you were rescued? This is what, when, when Casey got asked this question, this is what she said. Our, our co-host, Jess, she would probably write a poem. I would be writing a screenplay about our experience and trying to act it out. <laughs> and Casey would be sleeping. So. <laughs> yes, Gilligan style here, Gilligan style. Right, right. <laughs> so... So what would you be doing if you and your castmates, what, what would everybody be doing if you and the four were mm -hmm. stuck on an island together? Okay. Okay. Um, Jeff would be, um, Jeff would be writing, Jeff would be writing something and, um, and he might be writing like raps, like rhymes. Okay. Um, <laughs> wow. That's and, a new one. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, man. He knows his hip hop. Like wow. he really oh. knows his stuff. Oh yeah. Um, and he's a super deep dude too, but, but, but he like he, he likes, he likes, he likes his hip hop for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> Eric would be building a bridge like out of a log, like some wood over like a Creek on the Island. And then being mm -hmm. like, I'm making this, I'm do uh, chop this thing and I'm doing this. I have to move these rocks. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> Yeah, 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 because you're a man. You're a real man. Um, <laughs> Kristen, uh, well, Kristen would be, and, and Crystal, well, listen, they're, those three, and Eric, too, they're, they're parents. So right. they're probably, like, going to be tripping over their kids if they don't have their children with them. If they did have their kids with them, then Kristen and Crystal would be these amazing moms, and they would be being moms. Aww. And so they would be making this time on the island being as productive, creative, and educational and safe for the children as possible. <laughs> um, because I know those are, as they should be, um, mm. priorities um, for them, but they're just really, really, really loving women. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and myself, I would be praying, um, probably like Jess, writing a poem or poetry. <laughs> and then... Um, like looking for an animal to capture and feed my friends. And then probably doing like chin-ups and push-ups and like, <laughs> like smashing coconuts. You know, and, uh, get the, get the bamboo. Uh, uh. Yeah, exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And, wa and walking, like walking and writing a poem and walk and then walking and praying mm -hmm. and then working out a bit and then coming back and smashing a coconut and then and trying to hunt to feed my friends. Multitasker, Multi over yes, here. yes, <laughs> multi talented multitasker. I didn't say I could do any of them, or I'm any good at it, but I'd, I'd be trying, I'd be trying to You'd do be trying. <laughs> oh, that's super fun. That, that was all, that was it. That was all. great. You can continue making SSD movies, you've passed our test. Yay, <laughs> yes, yes, and hopefully, there will be many, more. many, many more. I have a, I have a, I have a good feeling. I have a, I have a, just like, it feels, it feels like it's important. It's necessary. It feels like the world needs another one. At least. Yeah. So at I least. think it'll happen. Yeah. Yes. Yep. 
Absolutely. And, and we continue having this, you know, joyful support and love and encouragement manifested from you guys and the whole team. Then, Which you shall. Um, then, yeah, man, then how could we be denied? We cannot be <laughs> denied, right? <laughs> right. So Absolutely. thank you both. Thanks for having me. And thank you for your kindness and consideration and then a fun time. This was really fun. Yes. It was so much fun getting to know you and so you fun. have been so inspiring and so um, it, it's just been such a joy to get to know you better and talk to you and get to know the man behind Ramon. <laughs> <laughs> it's, been, it's been my pleasure. We haven't done the, the wrist flick. We had to do the wrist flick. Ramon. Ramon. <laughs> Ramon. Ramon. Do you have any upcoming projects that we should be looking out for? And do you have social media that you'd like to share for us to be following you on so we can follow you on your next adventures yeah and i really apologize i'm just like i said earlier like i don't didn't even understand gifts like i'm i'm not as good with social media as i should be but i definitely try to like respond to people and um and you i do definitely that very very oh, well yes. okay you do that good. very thank well. you and i also try to um and, and, and i appreciate things and i like it so like mm -hmm. Um, I just not as I'm just not as good on it on all ways of um, as maybe some people are, but I I do have social media. Uh, uh, my Instagram is Zach Santiago, so that's like Z A K Santiago. My Twitter is at Zach Santiago, and then I've got like a face Facebook uh, like fan page too, mm -hmm. which I mm -hmm. I probably should should do something with. <laughs> but <laughs> maybe I'll post be posting this on it when there you go. Oh, <laughs> we would love, love that. that. Um, and that's also just like Zach Santiago. I think it's got a picture of me. I don't know what the, the avatars are, but you guys can find you guys can find. We'll so by all by all means, follow me or write me or or like or don't like things on there. And um, and that's yeah, just um, keep spreading love. And then upcoming, I know there's an Amazon miniseries I'm supposed to do next month. There's another. Uh, a movie with a really good friend of mine is coming up like in a week to produce a film up here. So I don't know what I'm doing. I, this one project I just finished is, is really lovely. Um, it's a Christmas movie talking about how much I love Christmas. It's a romance. Oh, okay. um, so you get to see me be a little romantic. Takes please, place please in. Tell me, please tell me it's going to air on Hallmark. Please, 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 please. It won't be on Hallmark, unfortunately. It's on is this Lifetime. It's on Lifetime, yeah. Okay. okay. I, I was about to say, if it's just going to air in Canada, I'm going to die. <laughs> no, no, it's it's an American show, and mm -hmm. it'll be, yeah. um, I hope it airs in Canada, uh, but yeah. for sure it'll be airing in the States. Um, mm, okay. And it's called Christmas Yule, like not Yule Log, but Yule Blog. Christmas Yule. Blog. Oh, yes, yes. I think I saw <laughs> teasers for this. Yeah. I am and, writing that down mm, right now. Yeah, and it's really sweet, and it's a family thing, and it's like uh, our lead. Sarah Canning is mm -hmm. dynamite, man. She's just like, just really, really, really strong. That is going to be fun to see you as a yeah. romantic lead. Yes. That yeah. is going to be fun. Oh, yeah, That's very good. exciting. <laughs> so keep an eye out for that, and let me know what you think. Yeah, yes. we'll probably have, we'll probably end up recapping it since you're in we it. We definitely will. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. I look forward to that, yeah. and I'll, I'll 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 share that link too. Yay. Awesome. Maybe maybe after it airs, you'd like to come back and talk about it with us. It's a deal. Let's do it. All Sweet. right. Fabulous. Awesome. Well, Zach, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we hope that you have wonderful things coming your way and stay safe, stay healthy and be blessed. <laughs> Thank you. Likewise. God bless you both. And, um, yeah. Stay safe and all my best, um, my thoughts and prayers to yourselves and your families and your friends that they continue to stay safe and that we in our nations, our countries, we can, we can um, recuperate some of that, that solid footing that we most necessarily need um, now over this yeah. last while. So I'm, I'm, you're, you're all in my thoughts and prayers and to all the Postal family. So thank you both. And thanks all of you. Thank All right, you thank so you. Much. All right, postables, that's a wrap. We will see you all next week. Bye. Bye, postables. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us on today's episode. For more juicy details and to hear what's coming up, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Deliver Me a Pod and on Instagram at Deliver Me a Podcast. 
And please check out our merch store for tons of Postables-inspired merchandise to enhance your fandom. See you next week.